Hi. I thought I'd do a little bit of uh, guest refresher as far as getting into the classwork, but also uh, cover a few of the key topics in the first uh, module. Uh, so you logged into Cisco Netacad, uh, you went to the modules. Hopefully by this time you've looked at the first time that in this course and you've used student resources and you've downloaded uh, Packet Tracer. Now when it comes time to uh, getting to the point where you're looking at the material, you're going to click Introduction to Networks course. And then it's going to say Load Introduction Networks course in a new window. Let's see if I've got a big enough screen. Yeah, a little bit. What you're going to see off to the left, let me see if I can even, is all the different topics that we're going to be covering. Uh, right now, we're going to be, this week, will be networking today. Um, and then if you look at, let me see if I move my picture down a little bit. You've got what you know view you know places you've currently if you've viewed before if you you know had done anything like that if you'd actually looked at the site before you can bookmark the section you can look at the course index and in that you'll see uh, how many text sections that are interactive activities uh, annotations, quizzes, so on and so forth. Uh, so there's a lot of information uh, there that uh, we're going to be going through. Now, introduction to networks. Let's see if I can... Sometimes I don't like the way this plays out here. Let me see if I can... i to get way off to the left here. And basically what this is talking about, we're learning about networking concepts. So hopefully by the end of this class, you'll know how to build a local area network using basic uh, configurations of switches and routers, uh, IP protocol. Uh, and it's, it just lays foundation that if you're wanting to have networking as a clear career, it lays the foundations, the first class of three for your CCNA uh, certification criteria. Uh, so now just get my picture out of it all together. So why should you take, and then you're going to see a lot of why should you take it information, what do I learn? So you'll see uh, the different topics, you know, uh, networks, uh, we all know that uh, how computer networks are affected. I mean, right now you're in a computer network just watching this class. Or when you uh, texted a friend or called your parents, you, you, you saw an access, a use of a computer network. Now, of course, there are different components to a network. And you're going to see the term uh, host, which pretty much means an end device. Uh, it's your phone, it's your computer, uh, that ends up being an end device or a host. You're hosting, you're starting an initiation of a communication. Um, you'll look at uh, how network representation, how do we display them, how do we organize them. Uh, we'll look at the different types of networks, uh, look at different ways uh, we connect to the internet. Uh, local area network, wide area network. Uh, what's it take to build a reliable network? And what are some of the trends in some security? And what does it take to be an IT professional? Uh, so there's a lot of uh, information in this chapter. Um, so it's a good foundation, a lot of definitions, a lot of terms. Um, so as you go through this, I mean, you'll see videos on the CISO Network Academy. I highly recommend you go through these, probably not you know, maybe it's not this first one, but we get start getting into some of the other laters, you're going to, you know, lessons, you're going to want to use the information that's in this 
uh, Academy because it has tons of information. So just don't Google answers, go through the material, especially if you want to be a network administrator, a uh, network designer, uh, you're going to want to, to know this stuff. And the only way you're going to know it is to go through it, read it. And sorry to say, you got to pay your dues. I mean, because we know that you can pretty much get a hold of anybody, any place. I mean, you, you get a picture, you know, camping on the, on the top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere, and more than likely you can get <laughs> cell service. Now, the type of components we've got in a network, here you've got hosts. What are these? you got clients, which are your computers, a host. It's a client is a type of host because it initiates information. you got the Internet. You've got some media and you've got usually a destination. Uh, so you've got different types of servers out there, whether it's an email server, web server, file server. Uh, we won't build a lot of these, but you used every one of these today, probably uh, several. Now, as far as types of networks, I can be really simplistic and not uh, not need a lot of e networking equipment and there's a way of doing a a point to point or a peer to peer network which says hey I'm going to have you know somebody's got the printer I'm going to share it and somebody's going to say hey I need to print substance but when this middle PC is turned off or shut off do I have access to the printer the answer is no because the one in controlling the printer is the one in the middle, and we just, once you shut that down, you lose sight of everything. They're easy to set up. They're not very complicated, but because there's no centralized administration, not, obscure, not, not as uh, secure, definitely can't grow the network very easily. Now, end devices <laughs> are devices that you're, you're the one most useful, used to seeing uh, they are um, your computers your laptops and like I said sometimes they'll show some video and if you click on the play it says what happens to a packet of information a message you're sending and how does it get from point A to point B uh, it gets to an intermediary device it makes some decisions as to which way it wants to go once it makes its decision and there's a lot of different ways of making that decision it chooses one and then passes it on checks the destination and delivers the message this is the kind of stuff we're going to talk about building it what decisions are being done at switches which are are these and routers which are the circular ones with the four little arrows going through uh, we'll look at ways of setting those up so that you make sure the decisions you want made are the ones you want. Now, intermediate devices are the ones that are in the middle. So you, you saw in this picture, I've got an internet work here that says, hey, these are all intermediary devices, intermediate, intermediary devices. You got end devices, intermediary devices. They're, they're kind of in the middle of, of everything. Uh, they're used to regenerate and retransmit. They maintain information. They direct information along the path, as you saw in that little brief, brief video. Uh, now, along that way, is they all had to go along something. They had to travel along some sort of media, whether it's cable, whether it's wireless. Uh, there's different types of cable they're made out of. You get made out of copper, made out of fiber. Uh, which are basically just small pieces of glass that you're sending light through. You've got your wireless communication. All of those are media in which to send data along. And of course, the questions you're going to ask yourself is like, okay, what's the maximum distance? What kind of environment can I install this? How much data can I transmit? You know, those are types of questions you'd want to do. Now, I would highly recommend you check your understanding along the way. I'm not going to, but I think you should, just to make sure you're understanding each of these concepts as we're, as we're going through them. Now, come on, computer. Now, you look at it, it says, okay, now how do I represent 
these? How do I design this? How do I write them out? And this is when you get into Packet Tracer. You saw, if you watch that Packet Tracer video, you saw a little bit of icons representing the different devices, end devices, intermediary devices, network or intermedia device, you know. So just know that when you're looking at Packet Tracer, those representations aren't just arbitrary. They're things that the industry uses so that when you're designing something and sharing it and reviewing it with other people before it's implemented, you know what you're talking about. Now, there are things that in your design that are not necessarily um, talked about. You've talked about your network interface card, and that's the the device that's inside your, let's say, your computer that your network cable would connect to. There's a physical connection, a physical port that is connected to that. And it may also be called an interface. So it's an interface to the network. Uh, so you want to take a look at that. Now, as far as types of doc topology, you know that topology basically is a how do I lay out a network, a visual map of how the network's connected? There are basically two types. There's a physical topology and there's a logical topology. Now, the physical one is how do I have everything physically connected? You know, and you can follow the wires to every single of the devices. But that doesn't necessarily mean how the data flows. And that's what the logical topology is. It's how does the data flow from one device to another. So when we're talking about logical, it's the it's how the data flows and physical just says how are they physically connected to one another. And we'll bypass that little quiz and let you take that. Now you got a several different types of network. They come in many shapes and sizes. Um, you've got a small home network. Most of us probably have one of those. You're probably working in one. Uh, pretty much has what? One wireless access point that you bought, a Netgear, you know, wireless router, some cables, maybe a printer. Uh, a small office or home office, and you may hear the term SOHO, S-O-H-O, -O, small office, home office, to uh, and it's just a little bit larger network, but still small enough that maybe it's a small business uh, that you may do. Um, so your small home office looks probably similar like that. Your, let's see, let me just push through the button here. It gives you a few others. A small office, maybe two or three devices. There's usually, you don't want to get too carried away. I don't need a lot of things. Now you talk medium to large points, and most of our businesses out there deal with these medium to large networks. And you got an office complex, multiple layers, like you look at the campus would be this configuration. There's something going on in every single floor. There's computers, servers, routers, cables, connected, everything. And then the last one would be, you know, you've got worldwide networks. There are some major corporations out there, the AT&Ts in the world, uh, that have offices all over the world making sure you've got connectivity uh, to everything. Now you also have local area network and a wide area network. Now this is necessarily a uh, size of this you know because inter network interface into infrastructures can greatly in terms of uh, based on the size of the area covered, the number of users, uh, what kind of services are being offered, and who owns the responsibility? Um, so, you know, in this case, you've got you can have local area networks connected to a wide area network, which is similar to what's going on today when you're getting on the internet. Uh, all the little you're in a home office, but then you're connecting to a, a you know Amazon. So you go to the cloud. Cloud directs you to. Yeah, a branch of Amazon or a, a regionalized uh, shipping. So it, it def, definitely be you know something that normal. Um, a land usually expands a small geographic area. Uh, you know, like a home, a school, office building. Um, can you know usually about as just a single organization or person. Um, 
they can provide high bands bandwidth band speed you know speed and requires intermediary devices similar to something like that wide area network basically they they are interconnecting local area networks over a wide geographic between cities and states and countries um, they're usually managed by multiple service provider uh, it isn't just one person is managing everything from end to end uh, and then uh, but wider networks are technically typically slower uh, than your local area network of course now the internet's it, it's it's kind of a a interconnecting of networks internet works or internet for short um, and it's a collection of interconnected local area networks and wide area networks that just so what's that tell you there's not just one local area network and there's just not one wide area network and the internet just connects all of those things now there are a couple of things is you know that you want to keep in mind is uh, it tra terms are similar to the internet they're intranet and extranet and an intranet is used by a uh, it's it's re it's referred to as a private connection of local area networks and wider networks that belong to one organization and it pretty much only wants the people within an organization to communicate with each other uh, an extranet may be a way to provide a secure safe access to people that want you know from different organizations that want access to your company's data uh, so just give you a rough idea you've got your internet intranet is company only extranet would be your customers your suppliers you know, whoever you're working with collaborators and then that would interface to the internet, which go wide open to the whole world. So just keep at it. You know, those are just common terms. Uh, get past the test again. Now, if I look at different ways of accessing the internet, there are definitely several ways you, you can do that. Uh, if you're talking about your, your small office connectivity, there's basically four four or five different ways you can do it. There is a DSL, uh, uh, which is pretty much over the telephone lines. You've got your cable, like you're watching cable TV, uh, cellular, and over satellite. And for some cases, you can have your dial-up phone. All of those things go between your house, your PC, your small office, to an internet service provider, an ISP and then they provide you access to the outside world i'll let you go through that stuff now from a business standpoint now you've got other choices because i've got using more data more speed i want uh, so i want to dedicate that so i'll have a dedicated lease line so i will pay an internet service provider to uh, give me dedicated cable or a part of a cable uh, you may use a an ethernet a metro ethernet which is a, a an ethernet that a, a city or a town has laid out for all the businesses uh, of that nature or you could have a uh, business dsl basically again it's a dedicated uh, subscriber line using uh, telephone lines and of course you can still use your uh, your satellite. Now, we're looking at different networks. You look at the services they're offering. What you're seeing now is it used to be back when I first got in the industry that you bought a computer connected to a mainframe to an outside source, and all of them had to be the same vendor. They all had to be IBM, they all had to be Wang, they all had to be DEC. So you bought a deck computer, you bought a you know for your desktop, you had to buy deck cabling, deck connectors, deck interface to the outside world. So everything was a single vendor. Well, <laughs> over time, I think they realized that wasn't working. So now it's 
<laughs> I need to converge because I I don't need just because what could have happened you could have had one vendor for voice one for data uh, so they, they kind of well, that, that's kind of a waste of money in business and, and the industry says okay we need to consolidate we need to converge all of this into one media so that way I don't care if it's you know satellite the phone your computer all of it ends up being the same come the same provider gives you everything now here's uh, since we're going to do packet tracer you can watch the video on downloading uh, packet tracer and, and going step by step you can watch the video to watch it you can watch the video on how to get started with it uh, now I don't know if I assigned I know I've got two packet tracers assigned, so you don't have to follow the instructions that are, or as you're watching this, you don't have to do these. You follow the assignments that are in Moodle because you'll see more lab. I don't assign every single thing uh, that's allowed to you. So let's see, network architecture. That's how I'm designing it. And the four things you usually worry about is I want to worry about how how much will it handle a disaster fault uh, how easy it is scalability is how easy it is to change and modify or what is the quality of service can i allocate different service levels based on the type of data that's going through and of course what's big in everybody's mind is the security uh, that we use i'm not going to go through all of these i'll let you go through those get the proper definitions um go past the understanding and now there are definitely some trends that are going on now <laughs> some of those are <laughs> bring your own devices to work how many of you brought your own laptop your own phone connected up to the school's network all of us online collaboration video communication we <laughs> cloud computing all of these are things that this technology is allowing us to do. I'll let you go through. I mean, some of those are fairly straightforward, and I'll let you go through it. Online collaborations, uh, video, it's a good way of seeing how uh, WebEx is used, uh, cloud computing, different types of clouds. Uh, there are public clouds, private clouds, hybrid clouds, which is kind of a mix between public and private, and then community, where just a exclusive made for a different organization or stuff um, yeah, let's see let's get past all of this private power line now this one's kind of cool is that um, if you don't have Ethernet uh, running through your house you can actually use existing house wiring to connect uh, devices uh, sometimes physically sometimes you know wirelessly uh, wireless broadband uh, the, this is where you've used your internet services to get uh, access to data remotely um, and we've all used that uh, we'll get you past that let's see network security and yeah, there's gonna be a whole lot of discussion on security but we all know there are several different types of threats uh, to networks uh, from viruses to identity theft to, to everything in between each one of those has a method to help design against and to detect and do something with um, there are different ways of solving these whether it's through uh, uh, antivirus software anti-spy you know firewalls uh, there are different uh, I don't know if this class will get into access control lists, uh, which is just setting up rules of how packets go th in and out of your your network. Uh, so it, it's there's a lot that we'll get into as the semester goes on. We'll get past the security yeah, a little bit further. And the question is, do I want to be an IT professional? Um, a lot of good money in it it is because this is not a, an easy topic um, it sometimes uh, people shy away from it um, so uh, but if you're interested in networking classes and I actually think 
that most of you either if you're in biomed or networking and even today um, most fields you're going to require some knowledge of networking to make things happen so hopefully that gives you a rough idea a little longer video than i wanted to make but i, th I think it's uh, worthwhile if you have any questions let me know